For me personally, 2017 was the year of Bethesda. Say what you will about the Creation Club debacle, I even made a video on it, but Bethesda's published titles have reigned supreme. Prey, Dishonored, Death of the Outsider, The Evil Within 2, and to round out the year, we had Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. A game that manages to be an excellent sequel, while also establishing itself as one of the best single-player first-person shooters of this decade. Decade. Wolfenstein 2 was hands down my favorite game of 2017, and it is now one of my favorite games of all time, and this is why. The New Colossus picks up almost immediately after the finale of The New Order, as B.J. Blazkowicz has sustained heavy injuries from his battle with General Death's head, and is on the verge of death himself. He is rescued by his friends and comrades, and brought back on board the Eva's Hammer, the German U-boat captured by the Resistance in the first game. He goes into a coma for the next five months, while the fight against the Nazis rages on without him. B.J. has been branded by the Nazis as Terror Billy in his absence but eventually he wakes to find the Nazis attacking the Eva's hammer, and so he gets up out of bed and promptly falls over. BJ Blaskowitz from the New Order is gone, and in his place is a beaten and broken man who can only move around while in a wheelchair. It's a decidedly depressing turn for our hero, but it sets the tone for the rest of the story, as BJ and other new and returning characters must travel to the United States to start a revolution and use the country as a launching pad to free the rest of the world. The new Colossus is dark, hilarious, and bold in its storytelling. This is a game that doesn't pull its punches when it comes to the characters and the situations they find themselves in. During the course of the story, we see flashbacks to BJ's childhood, where he was raised by a Polish mother and abusively racist Texan father. These moments further strengthen BJ as a character, as we see that much of his hatred towards the Nazis and their ideology comes from his own relationship with his father. The topic of racism and white supremacy comes up often in the new Colossus. And while it's not an idea that's comfortable to approach for some, Wolfenstein does have many interesting and socially relevant things to say about these topics. The characters are what make the story shine brighter, however. BJ's arc is a deeply emotional one, and the story of the New Colossus further cements him as one of the greats in the Hall of Fame of video game protagonists. Anya is now pregnant with twins, and she turns into a Nazi-killing badass in her own right. New characters such as Grace, Superspech, Sigrun, and Horton also stand out among the crowded cast. Depending on your choice from the New Order, either Fergus or Wyatt also make a return to the game, and both are equally hilarious and badass in their own ways. Frau Engel makes for a terrifyingly chilling adversary, and will no doubt be thought of as one of the best video game villains in recent memory. I can't really say much else without going into major spoiler territory, but suffice it to say that there are moments in this game that have to be seen to be believed, including a section about halfway through the story that has to be one of the biggest jaw-dropping moments I've witnessed in any video game. The story retains so much of the humanity of BJ and his friends while also delving deep into the territory of the absurd. I'll sum it up with this. This is an emotionally gripping, adrenaline pumping, and hilariously over the top continuation of the story from the New Order, and I enjoyed every single second of it. The gameplay for the new Colossus has also taken several steps forward compared to the new order. The weapons are meaty and even more satisfying to shoot this time around, with many of the same weapons used in the previous game gaining some alterations. You can now dual wield any combination of guns in your hands. Want to hold a shotgun and an assault rifle? 
go for it. Want to use a silenced weapon in one hand and a louder, heavier weapon in the other? You can do that too. You also receive two different special weapons from either Fergus or Wyatt, depending on who you chose. Fergus gives you access to an even better version of the laser cannon from the first game, while Wyatt offers you a sticky grenade launcher that is just as fun to use. The perk system from the New Order also returns, though it has been streamlined to allow for smoother skill progression during gameplay. Stealth has also seen some changes, as the Nazi commanders from the previous game have been upgraded. They can now call for reinforcements several times, so making them priority targets is a must. You also get a hatchet for stealth and melee takedowns, which are especially gruesome, but endlessly satisfying. Ah. In addition to this, by eliminating Nazi commanders, you gain access to Enigma codes, which open up optional side missions that allow you to return to previously explored areas to hunt down high-value targets within the Nazi hierarchy. Later on in the story, you gain access to one of three special abilities that allow for even more options in combat. The Constrictor Harness allows BJ to squeeze through small vents and passageways to get the jump on unsuspecting Nazi soldiers. The Ram Shackles allow BJ to smash through walls and even enemies, turning them into a cloud of red mush. Finally, the Battle Walker Stilts allow BJ to reach higher ground and get an elevated advantage over the Nazis, while also allowing you to reach secret areas you otherwise wouldn't have been able to reach. Most importantly, however, the gameplay is simply more fun in this iteration. Machine games appear to have taken some notes from the Doom reboot of 2016 and applied them to Wolfenstein 2 to make the act of killing Nazis an even greater pleasure than in the New Order. Suffice it to say, the New Colossus doesn't make many drastic changes to the combat, but they managed to make killing Nazis a grand old time once again. The areas you explore and fight through are also just as appealing as the gameplay. Whether you're in the radioactive, bombed-out ruins of Manhattan, walking down the streets of Nazi-occupied Roswell, exchanging gunfire in the southern parish of New Orleans, or even walking the surface of the planet Venus, each level is a joy to play through, with plenty of visual variety to show for it. There is also the new hub area on board the Eva's Hammer, which gives the player some time to chat with your friends between missions and participate in small but meaningful side missions. While there are fewer unique areas in the New Colossus compared to the New Order, they manage to be just as vibrant and memorable as some of the best sections from the previous game. With the aid of your chosen contraption device, you can also find hidden secrets and collectibles alongside alternate pathways that allow for multiple routes to your objectives. While I wish there had been maybe one or two more unique levels to play through, what we have been given is great nonetheless. Borrowing the id Tech 6 engine from Doom, this is arguably the best-looking first-person shooter on the market. The colors are rich, and the environments and character models are laden with detail. The particle effects pertaining to fire and laser weapons are destructively beautiful. The cutscenes are also excellently animated and well voice acted. The Nazi-fied Americana culture of the 1960s has also been handled with great care. The Roswell sequence is a real standout, with Nazis marching through the streets, propaganda books being sold by street vendors, and even a hilarious interaction between a Nazi soldier and two hooded members of the KKK. This really captures the potential feeling of how the United States of America would have appeared had Hitler's Third Reich managed to win World War II. I'll go so far as to say that Mick Gordon's soundtrack for the new Colossus far surpasses his work on Doom. This man can do no wrong when it comes to hard-hitting metal, but also slower and mellow bits. The music perfectly amplifies the story and gameplay experience, providing those perfect pulse-pounding beats when you're blasting through a small army of Nazis, while also bringing you to the verge of tears during the game's more somber and emotional moments. The New Colossus also reworks many of the best tracks from the New Order and makes them even better, and if there's one thing I'm a real stickler about, it's music musical continuity. Machine Games also expanded on the faux 1960s songs from the first game, sprinkling in a few new ones, for good measure. In the US, I, the 
In summation, if you enjoyed the characters and story of the New Order like I did, you'll be excited and shocked to see where the story goes in the New Colossus. Everything has been cranked up to 11 this time around. It all adds up to give the player an experience that will stick with them for a long time. This is a game that I can easily recommend to you if you're a fan of single-player story-driven shooters like myself. As of this writing, there are several DLC packs planned for Wolfenstein 2, aptly titled The Freedom Chronicles, with two episodes having been released already, The Adventures of Gunslinger Joe and the Diaries of Agent Silent Death. These DLC episodes provide even more reasons to return to the game for more Nazi-killing mayhem, and they also provide different perspectives from different characters in this alternate timeline. This is also purportedly the middle chapter in Machine Games' planned Wolfenstein trilogy, and I eagerly anticipate the finale to this fantastic rebooted series. I love Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, and hopefully this video has shown you some of the reasons why I love this game, and I hope you try it out as well. Thanks for watching everyone, be sure to leave some comments letting me know what you think about Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, and remember that the outsider walks among us. <laughs>